So yes, the general scheme of urine formation resembles the technique we often employ to clean a messy cupboard. Step number one, we remove everything from the cupboard and throw it on the floor. This is junk for us. Step number two, from this junk, we pick what we think is useful for us and place it nicely back into the cupboard. We discard the rest of the items. Step number three, in the second thought, we might feel that I have put it in the dustbin, but maybe tomorrow I feel I can wear this one. Maybe I can gift it to somebody or maybe I really want to keep it in my cupboard. I like it so much. So I'll place it back in the cupboard. So this is step number three. So how are these steps of cleaning a cupboard related to the formation of the urine? Step number one, we remove everything from it and throw it on the floor. This is junk for us. This one can be compared to the glomerular filtration in the kidneys. Glomerular filtration is bulk, non-discriminant filtration of the plasma into the Bowman's capsule. The second step, it can be compared with the tubular reabsorption because we are placing some of the substances that we think are beneficial back in the cupboard. So in the next part of the nephron, the most of water, the useful solutes like glucose, amino acids, they will be reabsorbed back from the tubular lumen to the peritubular capillaries. Body wants them back. Step number three. In the second thought, we feel that we can take out a few items from the dustbin and yes, we want to keep it in the cupboard. This one is like tubular secretion where the useful articles are placed from the PTC, peritubular capillaries, into the tubular lumen. So finally, what is left in the filtrate is discarded as urine. So the glomerular filtration, the plasma that is present in the glomerulus is being filtered into the Bowman's capsule. From where this plasma, this blood is coming? From the afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole has a wider diameter as compared to the efferent arteriole. And that has a physiological significance. We'll discuss it. So this volume of the glomerular filtrate that is formed each minute by all the nephrons in both the kidneys. How many nephrons are there in the human body? Millions of them. Maybe one million per kidney. So two million nephrons. Okay. So there are a lot of nephrons. So this volume of the glomerular filtrate formed each minute by all the nephrons in both the kidneys is termed as GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Interestingly, the kidney receives 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output, even though the weight is just 1 percent of the body weight. So, see how much cardiac output it is receiving. And all the other organs, they receive blood for their nourishment, for getting oxygen and nutrients. But in the kidneys, the blood is coming for purifying, cleansing itself. How much is the normal GFR? I want to know how much of the glomerular filtrate is formed from the plasma per minute. That is 125 ml per minute. In one hour, we have 60 minutes. In one day, we have 24 hours. Now, I want to know how much GFR per day. So, that is about 170 to 180 liters per day. So, this one is a combined of both the kidneys. But average urine output is just 1.5 liters per so what happens to the rest of the filtrate? Of course, you know, it is being reabsorbed back in the body. Okay. So what are the benefits of this high GFR? You can think of all these. It will allow the kidneys to rapidly remove the waste products from the body. Very nice. It will allow the plasma to be filtered and processed so many times, maybe 60 times per day. So that's a nice thing. And it will allow the kidney to maintain its homeostasis to precisely and rapidly control the volume and composition of the body fluids. So you need a high GFR. So the GFR is happening across a membrane, a glomerular membrane or the filtration barrier. This is the barrier that the plasma has to traverse to reach the Bowman's capsule. This membrane consists of three parts, the endothelial cell layer, the basement membrane and the podocyte cell layer. 
So the fluid that is filtered from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule must pass through these three layers. And these layers make up the glomerular membrane. What can pass through this? All the plasma, okay, including the water and the solutes. In fact, this glomerular membrane is acting like a sieve. We have a sieve in the kitchen to filter the tea particles or the dust particles. So this is a sieve. The plasma will be filtered through this sleeve. Okay. Water, the small solutes will pass through. The sodium, the glucose, everything will pass. Will the RBCs pass? And what about the plasma protein? Low molecular weight, calcium, fatty acid that are bound to plasma protein? No, they will not pass. So this is bulk filtration, ultrafiltration, non-discriminant except for RBCs and plasma proteins. Is the glomerular capillary same as the other capillaries? Yes, it is similar to the other capillaries except that it is a single layer of flattened endothelial cells. The other capillaries in the body, they have many layers. And this one, another difference is it is perforated by many pores. So it is 100 times more permeable to water and solutes than the capillaries elsewhere in the body. And these pores, interestingly, they are of 8 nanometer or 80 angstrom size. So you can imagine which particles can pass through these one. And these pores are negatively charged, so they will repel the negatively charged particles. They will attract the positive ones and neutral ones. The second layer is the basement membrane, which is a cellular gelatinous layer composed of collagen and the glycoproteins. Collagen, you know, provides structural strength to this membrane. And we have negatively charged glycoproteins or sialoprotein that will discourage the filtration of negatively charged particles. Filtrability of the solutes is inversely proportional to their size. So what we mean by this is that the particles that are less than 4 nanometer will be freely filtered across the glomerular membrane. 4 to 8 may pass or may not pass depending upon their charge. More than 8 nanometer will not be filtered at all. So this is the graph plotted between the filtrability and the molecular radius in angstroms. As you can see from this one, as the size of the particle is increasing, the filtrability is decreasing. On the y-axis, the top value is 1.0 and the minimum is 0. So what it means, 1.0. 1.0 means the solute will be filtered as freely, as rapidly as water. Take another value, 0.6. That means the substance will be filtered only 60% as rapid as water. We are comparing with the water. 0.75, the substance is filtered only 75% as rapidly as freely as water. Now this one, the figure shows how the electrical charges they affect the filtrability of different molecular weight substances. For this experiment, we use the dextrins. Actually, dextrons are the polysaccharides that can be manufactured as neutral molecules or as positive charges or as negative charges. Okay. So here you can see the positively charged cations. They have more filtrability as compared to the neutral ones. And neutral ones have more filtrability as compared to the anions. So negatively charged, it is very difficult to cross the membrane. And it is easiest for the positively charged. Neutral ones come in between. Okay. Now what is the scenario with albumin? In a healthy individual, albumin does not appear in urine. But you said that filtrability depends on size. And less than 4 can pass readily. 4 to 8 can pass depending upon the charge. What is the size of the albumin molecule? It is 6 nanometer. But what about the charge? It is negatively charged. So it cannot cross the glomerular membrane. But in certain diseases, like in children, the most common minimal change nephropathy. Or in adults, membranous glomerulonephritis. In these diseases, we see albuminuria. Albumin is present in urine because the negative charge of the glycoprotein, the sialoprotein, it gets altered. It gets changed. Negativity reduces. 
so then this albumin will come in urine okay and edema will be there so what are the forces involved in glomerular filtration there are forces that are favoring filtration we have forces that are opposing filtration and the balance of these forces is known as starling forces so the physical forces involved in glomerular filtration number one glomerular capillary blood pressure how do you define this one nothing but the fluid pressure exerted by the blood within the glomerular capillaries okay and this one will depend upon the contraction of the heart because heart is the source of energy for all the blood it will also depend upon resistance to the blood flow that is provided by resistance by the afferent arteriole resistance by the efferent arteriole what is the normal value of glomerular capillary blood pressure? It is 55 to 60 millimeters mercury. It is very high as compared to the capillaries elsewhere in the body. Why it is high? Or how this high pressure is maintained? Because of the diameter of the afferent arteriole. High caliber of the afferent arteriole as compared to the efferent arteriole. So that means blood can more readily enter the glomerulus through the wide efferent arteriole than it can leave through the narrowed efferent arteriole. And second thing is there is high resistance of the efferent arteriole. Another difference from the capillaries elsewhere in the body is here the pattern is non-decremental. If you see the other capillaries as you move along the length of the capillary the pressure will keep on decreasing but here no the pressure remains the same. So this one is elevated it's high non-decremental not decreasing along the length elevated non-decremental glomerular blood pressure so this is favoring filtration we have plasma colloidal osmotic pressure and Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure both of them are opposing filtration plasma colloidal osmotic pressure is because of the unequal distribution of the plasma in the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule what does it mean you already know that the plasma proteins they are present in the blood in the glomerulus but they are not filtered so they do not come in the Bowman's capsule. So on one side in the glomerulus you have high plasma protein on the other side in the Bowman's capsule you do not have plasma protein so concentration gradient is established due to which the water will move. Okay, The water will move from the Bowman's capsule side to the glomerulus side osmosis. So this pressure is opposing filtration 30 millimeter mercury. Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted by the fluid in the initial part of the tubule. This is 15 millimeter mercury or 10 millimeter mercury. Okay. So this GFR will depend upon the balance of the starling forces. What is the net filtration pressure across the membrane? It is pressure that are favoring filtration minus the pressure that are opposing filtration okay so 60 minus this 30 plus 15 so this comes to be 15 millimeter or 10 millimeter depending on your values so this is gfr it will depend upon filtration coefficient as well as the net filtration pressure both now what is filtration fraction in renal physiology filtration fraction is the ratio of gfr and renal plasma flow so that means it represents the proportion of plasma or the blood that passed in the filtrate okay that is filtered at the level of the glomerulus so how much of the plasma is filtered 125 ml per minute divided by plasma flow that is 700 ml per minute so it comes out to be 16 to 20 percent 0 0.16 to 0 0.20 so this is the amount of the plasma that is filtered at the glomerulus Okay, so now let us suppose there is renal artery stenosis. So what will happen? Renal plasma flow, your denominator will decrease. Okay, so if you have to maintain the blood flow to the kidneys, then the filtration fraction should increase. If the renal plasma flow decreases, then filtration fraction should increase because the kidneys have to perform normal functions. The catecholamines means they increase the filtration fraction how because they cause constriction of the efferent and efferent arterioles and even in cases of severe hemorrhage this filtration fraction increases right so hope you enjoyed this video
In the next one, we are going to study what are the factors that affects the glomerular filtration rate and how autoregulation of GFR is brought about. So thank you very much. Stay connected.